My name is Miti Fafa Adote. I'm an assistant professor at the Department of Biosystems Engineering and Soil Sciences. I'm also University of Tennessee Soil and Nutrient Management Specialist, and I'm based in West Tennessee Research and Education Center located in Jackson. My talk will focus on nitrogen efficiency for optimal grain yield. The way I look at it is that one of the ways to improve efficiency is to reduce your losses. So my presentation will focus on two key things. The first one will be talking about the different nitrogen loss pathways that are available in crop production system, particularly whenever you apply your nitrogen-based fertilizers. I'll talk about some of the triggers of this nitrogen loss. I'll also talk about products that are available on the market that can help you reduce nitrogen loss. Then I'll shift gears and then talk about for our nutrient stewardship principles. These principles are very important and can also help you improve your nitrogen use efficiency. Let's talk about nitrogen loss pathways. So there are several nitrogen loss pathways. There is ammonia volatilization, there is denitrification, there is leaching, and there is surface runoff. These are ways you can lose your nitrogen. But for my talk, I'll focus on ammonia volatilization, denitrification, and leaching. So let's begin with our first nitrogen loss pathway that will be ammonia volatilization. The picture you see here is a corn plant that is about V4 growth stage. This is when uh, we typically recommend growers to side dress their nitrogen between V4 to V6 growth stage. Uh, most growers typically put about two thirds of their total recommended nitrogen at this time. So when growers surface apply their urea or urea ammonium nitrate, what happens is that that urea is converted to ammonium in the presence of urease enzyme as well as adequate temperature and moisture. When there is rainfall, what happens is that that ammonium is incorporated into the soil. So that nitrogen is fairly stable. However, with nature, uh, rainfall cannot always uh, be predicted or may not fall when needed by the grower. So in that case, that ammonium can be converted to ammonia gas, which escapes to the atmosphere. So in the null shell, ammonia volatilization occurs when ammonium released from surface applied urea-based fertilizer that is converted into ammonia gas which escapes to the atmosphere. What are some of the factors that drive ammonia volatilization? Three points here. The greatest risk of ammonia loss typically occurs if that urea-based fertilizer sits on the soil surface without being incorporated into the soil. The second point is that ammonia loss in corn can range from somewhere between 20 to 30% of the nitrogen applied at side dress or at whatever time. Thirdly, generally, higher soil moisture, higher temperature, and higher soil pH tend to increase ammonia volatility potential of urea-based fertilizers. Let's talk about some of the products that can help reduce ammonia volatilization. So myself, as well as other soil scientists and extension specialists have looked at different products that can reduce ammonia volatilization. These products are broadly categorized as nitrogen stabilizers. There are two types of nitrogen stabilizers. We have the urease inhibitors and we have the nitrification inhibitors. For ammonia volatilization, to control that, what you need is a urease inhibitor. And one of the products that we've been looking at lately is Ample, and we've seen some great results using this product. The next nitrogen loss pathway that I'll talk about is denitrification. So ammonium 
can be converted to ammonia gas. We know that it can be taken up by plant, it can be adsorbed onto the soil surface. But ammonium is also converted to nitrate. I should have stated this earlier on. Plants do take up nitrogen in the form of either ammonium or nitrate. So the process of the conversion of ammonium to nitrate is what is referred to as nitrification. And this is carried out by nitrosomonas and nitrobacter. So what happens if you have nitrates and, you, and there's a huge rainfall, especially in a very uh, clay soil or fine textured soil? What happens is that if you have ponding continuously for extended periods, at least two or more days, what happens is that that nitrate is converted to nitrous oxide or denitrogen gas. Again, this escapes to the atmosphere and a grower can lose his or a nitrogen via this um, nitrogen loss pathway. What are some of the triggers of denitrification? There are three points. The first is that denitrification rate is greater in soils containing residue because these residues serve as food source for the microbes that are involved in the denitrification process. In a state like Tennessee, where we have substantial amount of corn growers that practice no-till, we will typically have higher residues or corn stock. So that's something important to note. And then depending on the soil properties as well as environmental condition, Nitrogen loss through denitrification may account for 5 to 25% of your total nitrogen applied. And this will typically occur in finer textured soils like clay because of the slow percolation. Yes, there are products that can minimize denitrification. Um, I have personally evaluated one of these products called Centuro. We've had some successes so far, but I've only had one year of data. And that data showed that uh, Centuro can indeed um, minimize to an extent the nitrification. The third nitrogen loss pathway I would focus on is leaching. So for coarse textured soil, uh, if there's a heavy rainfall, because nitrate is loosely held on the exchange side on the soil surface, it easily moves below the soil depth or the rooting depth where the plant can take it up and the plant will lose or the soil, uh, that nitrogen will be lost through that process. So what are some of the factors that influence leaching? Three points again, leaching is is at a greater risk if excess rainfall that I talked about occurs shortly after the nitrogen fertilizer application. Why? Because this is when you have high concentration of nitrate in the soil. Secondly, in coarse textured soil, leaching could account for 20% of your total nitrogen that you apply. And then the final point is that soil texture, soil structure, bulk density and depth to restrictive layer play very important roles in leaching potential. So it's very important to look at these factors as a grower and uh, identify if any of these might be an issue in your field. Now switching gears, I wanna talk about the 4R nutrient stewardship principles. There are four principles, and this was developed by IPNI and International Fertilizer Institute. And the goal here is that when you adopt certain practices, the four are doing things the right way, you could improve nutrient use efficiency. So this principle, it's not, it's adopted all over the world. And you can tailor suit it to your farming operation to get the best out of it. And it's not only restricted to nitrogen, but to other nutrients as well. So what I'd attempt to do here is to walk you through the four hours as it pertains to Tennessee, what our view is on four-hour nutrient stewardship principle. 
So in terms of the right source, we know that in Tennessee, urea-based fertilizers are commonly used by corn growers. Unfortunately, this fertilizer source is also susceptible to ammonia volatilization if itself is applied and it's not incorporated into the soil. So to make this source very useful, it's very important to treat that urea-based fertilizer with a proven nitrogen stabilizer. Why? It will minimize the risk of nitrogen loss and maximize nitrogen fertilizer efficiency. The next principle is right rate. So University of Tennessee's recommendation for nitrogen application rate for corn it's a very conservative approach and it's based on realistic yield goals. A grower can make adjustments just based on past production record or history, as well as PSNT soil test result if it's necessary, particularly if you put on some type of manure in your field. Also, there's an, a tool that is available to estimate corn end rate, which is the nitrogen rate calculator. And we are currently working to beef up that model to be more robust at predicting nitrogen rate recommendation. The third R is right timing. So in Tennessee, pre-plant nitrogen application in corn is not recommended. The only exception would be whenever you are applying anhydrous ammonia. The reason is that corn plants take up very little nitrogen less than 12% of the total nitrogen uptake during the growing season. So it's important not to pre-apply pre that nitrogen, pre-plant. If you, the recommendation is if you are putting out more than 120 pounds of nitrogen per acre, it's very important to split that nitrogen application. You want to apply a third of that recommended nitrogen at planting and side dress the remaining between V4 to V6 growth state. And finally, the final principle would be right place. So in Tennessee, broadcast applications are commonly used by most growers. However, broadcast methods are susceptible to ammonia loss. So it's very important when you are putting out nitrogen using urea-based fertilizer, it's important to treat that nitrogen with a proven nitrogen stabilizer. So what would be my take home? So I wanna focus on the four R. It's important to use the right source. If you're using urea-based fertilizer, it's important to treat that fertilizer with a nitrogen stabilizer. It's important to base your application on realistic yield goals. And when you are putting out more than 120 pounds of nitrogen per acre, it's important to split apply that nitrogen. And then if you are surface applying that urea-based fertilizer, it's important to treat that urea with a proven nitrogen stabilizer, unless you are injecting that U UAN or the liquid fertilizer, or there is forecast of rainfall right after fertilizer application. Can you find my contact information, my office, as well as cell number and email address? You can always email me. There's also a link to a soil fertility and nutrient management website that provides in-depth information of some of the things that I talked about today. Thank you.